Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the video and to a very, very special car indeed. Not just because it's incredible, but it's a really special car to me. It is, of course, the Audi R8. And today, more specifically, we're in an Audi R8 rear-wheel drive Spider, which I'll go into why, but for me, is the ultimate and the best car that they sell at the moment. And I say at the moment, as of the time I'm filming this, you can no longer buy a rear-wheel drive Spider, and 2023 is the last year that Audi will produce the R8. And I think that is really sad. We can go into a number of reasons as to why that is. Ultimately, it's due to the sort of push on electric cars and the move away from combustion engines. And we can't change that, but I think this car needs to be celebrated. And it is a special car to me, which I'll go into the reasons why as we drive. But let's do that exactly and uh, start the engine. So. driving an Audi R8 then? Well, because it may well be the last chance I get to drive one. Over the past few years now, I've been lucky enough to have a wonderful relationship with the guys at Audi UK. And this is now my fourth Audi R8 press load. I've also been lucky enough to drive a number of other R8s too, namely my friend Ben's former V8 manual car, and my friend Anthony from Sports and Touring's R8 GT, the original GT that is. And when I drove my friend Ben's R8 manual, I'm pretty sure that was more or less the first time I ever drove a supercar, like a mid-engined beast. And then when I was invited to a press drive in the Cotswolds with Audi UK, I drove a V10 R8 Spider, a bit like this one for the first time. And that really was the first supercar experience that I ever had. I've become extremely fond of the R8 over the many thousands of miles I've had to bond with them. My first ever press loan, I did a race against my then girlfriend, I think, my now wife, Katie, to Scotland. And I won in the car just. I then had a red R8 coupe, a rear wheel drive, which I took with my friend Charlie to the Nürburgring, which we subsequently maxed out on the German Autobahn and achieved a speed of 206 indicated miles per hour. It was a bucket list for me to always drive at 200 miles per hour, and it was in an R8 that I achieved it. Then the last R8 press loan to this one was my wedding car. I had an R8 on test for the week around my wedding. It was what I used to transport myself and my suit and all of the things I needed to get to the wedding. And it's then what my wife and I drove away from the ceremony in and went on honeymoon in to start our marriage, was in an R8. And now we're in my favorite of all, as I mentioned, the rear wheel drive, which gives you that playfulness at the back and the spider so you can take in all the senses all the sound and all the performance. I've always been a softy when it comes to convertible cars. My first proper car, which lots of you probably were watching the channel at the time, was a BMW Z4 and I would take every opportunity to drive that car with the roof down. And so this is just really special to be in the Spider. We will be getting the roof down very shortly. And so it's bittersweet because this may well be the last time I drive one of these R8s. There is an R8 GT hanging around on the press fleet, but I know it's extremely hard to get hold of, and I can't guarantee I'll get a chance to drive that before it, like the rest of them, presumably ends up in a collector's garage somewhere, although it will try. But for now at least, I'm gonna try and savor every single last second I have driving this R8. And the way we're gonna do that first is put the roof down Despite the terrible autumnal weather here in the UK, it's such a cool and intricate mechanism, this. You've got the car in dynamic mode, so the exhaust valves are as open as they will get. I'll leave the windows up so that you can hopefully 
just about hear me. And let's listen to this V10. I've been using this thing as my daily driver over the past five or six days and genuinely just doing runs over speed bumps in 20 mile an hour zones to the shops to get my Waitrose coffee. And with that V10 power plant behind your head, it makes even the most subdued and monotonous of journeys exciting. And that is all thanks to the 5.2 litre V10 engine. And so I have to say, I'm a little bit worried as a petrol head for the future. Audi are saying goodbye to their V10. They're saying goodbye to the Audi TT as well, which I own one and is a fantastic car. And so I wonder what's gonna happen to us, the rare breed now of petrol head <laughs> here in the UK. We have got the likes of Lamborghini and Ferrari continuing the naturally aspirated engine. And so there are places for us petrol heads to go, but for traditionally, R8s have been the obtainable supercar, the one that you're likely to be able to afford one day if it's where you put all of your pieces of gold. However, now that option will be gone at least as a new car. Some manufacturers like Porsche, for example, that are still making naturally aspirated cars. And so there are plenty of places for us to go. And also with the UK government delaying the sale on uh, combustion cars banned from 2030 to 2035, potentially some manufacturers like Audi might backtrack a little bit. I'm not too sure, but there are definitely still options. But like I say, the R8 is not going to be something you're going to be able to buy well, in the next few months. And if you're on the fence with something like this and you've always wanted one, I would strongly recommend you just get an order in quickly before the books are closed forever. I've been looking at the used market and the classifieds for a little while at R8s now, because like I say, it's a car that is so special to me. And now that I'm not going to be able to borrow them from Audi anymore, and now that they're not going to be making them anymore, it's got me thinking whether I should just go all in and buy one. And what I've discovered is quite remarkable, really, that you can pick up a first-generation 
V10, Audi R8, with a manual gearbox and no roof, for less than 60 grand. Which when I'm coming from 400 pound Audi TTs and 800 pound Volvo XC90s does sound extremely crude to me, but I think it's one of those opportunities where if I can do it, maybe I should. And I think it would be really cool to own a dying breed of car, a manual V10. Comment below if you think I should buy an R8. So there we have it then, the Audi R8. Uh, a car that really, honestly, I never want to stop driving. That's why I've left the engine running because I'm gonna make this outro very quick so I can get back in and, and drive it. I have to just say quickly, I think it looks fantastic in this Vegas yellow. And if you're gonna get a car like this, it, surely it's got to be in a extravagant color. It really suits the car. It adds to the whole character of it and it makes a lot of sense here, the V10 burbling away there so this may well be like i say the last time i drive one of these brand new models for a long long time however i am genuinely very very tempted to go out there and buy one for myself put my money where my mouth is and 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 get one while i can and uh, of course i'd love to hear your thoughts on that do you think that that is a stupid decision is it something you personally don't care about or would you be quite interested to see like my experience owning something like this, which would be way out of range of anything I've, I've owned before. Like I say, I'm used to having very cheap co-park cars. I've not owned a car worth more than about 5,000 pounds in my life. And so uh, going ahead and pulling the trigger on, not one of these, but an older model with a manual gearbox. Uh, I think could be I think it could be really interesting and, and insightful so do let me know if that is something you'd like to see otherwise I want to say a big thank you to Audi for being so good lending me these cars over the years and if you're watching and I can get a day or two in one of those R8 GTs um, I think we'd all love to see that wouldn't we so let's see if Audi can oblige there but otherwise, thanks so much to Audi for all their support with these RX over the years. It's now become a really special car to me, as I say. Had one at the wedding, it's always going to have a special place. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one very, very soon.